50 years after Apollo, we have a new program named after Apollo's twin sister. And in this new program, a sustainable return to the moon for the first time in human history, we're gonna have the opportunity to send not just men to the moon, but also women to the moon. We are living out the legacy of Apollo, but the Artemis program is very different and it's a program whose time has come. We're looking at reusing as much of the architecture as possible. That's why we're building the gateway. It's a reusable command and service module. And what we'd like to have is reusable landers that go back and forth from the gateway to the surface of the moon. So what we're doing is we're going to Mars and the moon is the way to get to Mars. So there's a number of advantages to using the moon to get to Mars. Chief among the advantages is that we can learn how to live and work on another world, a world that's not our own, utilizing the resources of that world. There are opportunities to have almost permanent sunlight on the South Pole of the Moon, which means that that's power, it's electricity. Also on the South Pole of the Moon is where water ice resides in mass volumes. Water ice, of course, is life support. It's water to drink, it's air to breathe, but it's also rocket fuel. Hydrogen and oxygen is the same rocket fuel that powered the space shuttles, same rocket fuel that powered the Saturn rockets. It's the same rocket fuel that will power uh, the space launch system, which is gonna be the largest, most powerful rocket ever launched, and it's gonna be the rocket that takes our astronauts back to the moon. In fact, the south pole of the moon. So the moon is the proving ground. It's not just about how to get there, but once you're there, how do you live and work using the resources of another world? And then of course, taking all of that technology and all of that capability to Mars, that's the goal.